All right. Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, uh, Krista Porter, uh, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the commission's uh, weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today, and it will be available later in our show archives for you to watch at your convenience. Um, and I'll show you how to access all those show archives at the end of today's show. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share uh, with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on Encompass Live. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. Um, so similar to your whatever state library. So we provide services and training and resources and databases and grants to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries, public, academic, um, K-12, corrections, museums, archives. Really, our only criteria is it's something to do with libraries, uh, something cool libraries are doing, um, something cool we think they could be doing, we do book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Um, we have uh, Nebraska Library Commission staff sometimes come on the show to talk about things we're doing here through the commission, but we also bring in guest speakers and that's what we have today with us um, is uh, Stephanie. Good morning, Stephanie. Good morning. Right there. <laughs> yes. Um, and uh, she's going to talk about something which actually um, relates to Encompass Live, which is pretty cool, um, but about um, how to get some training for yourself, how to get, you know, move yourself in, uh, how she went from vendor librarian, it's hard to say, <laughs> to public librarian. Um, so I'm just going to, um, and this is a session that she did, um, I did see this was at a Computers and Libraries Conference, which was earlier um, this year, it's always in the spring, in um, Washington, D.C. area. Uh, it's held there. Um, also, some sessions are done online. Um, I definitely recommend attending that one, or they have a companion conference, the Internet Librarian, which is done in the fall online. Um, definitely look into attending either of those conferences if you can. I've done been to many of them, and um, they have great resources. Um, if you are, I would say, intimidated by the gigantic ALA or PLA conferences, these could be the ones for you. It's which um, computers libraries is a much uh, more manageable group, I feel. Um, so I will just hand it over to you, Stephanie, to go ahead and uh, fully introduce yourself and tell us about how we can um, learn these new technologies on the fly. Sure. All right. Hello, everyone. My name is Stephanie Macklin Hurd. Um, I am the ILS support librarian for the Wagon District Libraries. Um, Wagon, the Wagon District encompasses three counties in southwestern Pennsylvania. Um, I um, am physically located about 30 miles south of Pittsburgh, um, and the libraries um, go, I believe it's like as far as about 70 miles south of Pittsburgh. So we co cover quite a large um, geographical area. And um, our libraries range from more suburban to much more rural. Um, and I will say that Pennsylvania is a bit weird. We call them library districts, um, but it would probably be what you're more familiar with in as calling a library consortia. Mm -hmm. um, so you may hear me use those two terms interchangeably throughout my presentation, both um, referring to the district or the consortia, and it's meaning the same thing. Um, and as was stated, I originally presented this um, topic at the Computers Libraries Conference in March of this year. Um, so this is learning new technologies on the fly from vendor librarian, which refers to working with library vendors, to public librarian. Um, the Wagon District is a public library consortia. So I actually want to start this presentation off with a little bit of a poll. Um, feel free to put your answers in the chat and I will 
um, give the answer at the end, um, which is how many cups of tea do you think I averaged? Um, the majority of what I'm gonna be talking about took place in early 2020 when mm. things first shut down um, at the very beginning of COVID. Mm -hmm. um, and about the first six to 12 months of the pandemic when you were dealing with things being closed and then working in libraries, figuring out stuff like curbside pickup and online story time and many things of that. And um, mm -hmm. this is a running joke I have with a lot of my staff is that I am a avid tea drinker. I don't know if you can <laughs> see me lifting up my mug. Yes, yeah. Um, so yeah, the, the running joke often between me and my staff is how many cups of tea um, do you think I averaged? And that's per day. Um, so feel free to put your answers in the chat and we will come back to that at the end. Yeah, go ahead and type into that question section there what you think, how you think things were going, maybe compared to how, how many cups of tea you were drinking <laughs> at that time. All right, so a little bit of background about me. Um, I started my current position um, in October of 2019. Um, I initially started part time, so I was working three days a week at roughly 25 hours a week. Um, that was by choice. Um, I am a parent. My um, kid at the time was very young um, and a part time schedule worked best um, in regards to me, you know, going back to work um with um the age at the time um so as i said my job title is out of ils support librarian and i do manage the ils um we use polaris for our um ils and i am i manage it for all the libraries in our district as i said we um encompass three counties in southwestern Pennsylvania, and we have 20 library locations across those three counties. None of them are branches. Each one is its own entity um, mm -hmm. that we happen to all share a catalog. So each library does have its own board. Um, each library has its own budget. Each library has its own needs. Um, while some stuff is taken care of at that um, district or consortia wide level, um, for the most part, each of the libraries are in charge of their own collections, in charge of their both physical and digital, um, and in charge of their own programming, all the good stuff that you would normally find in libraries. When I first started the position, I was not a tech person. Um, I got my MIS in 2010 with a specialization in archives. Hmm. Um, and some of my very early job work was actually working with special collections and archives. Um, but unfortunately, having graduated in 2010, that was right at the very end of the recession of that time. And not a lot of archives, museums, similar venues were hiring archivists. I eventually found a job at EBSCO, which hence the vendor brarian part of my title. EBSCO is who um, we use for our databases that we provide to libraries across the state of Nebraska. Thank yes. <laughs> um, I was on the catalog specialist team, um, which means I actually helped libraries academic public special medical government implement the ebsco discovery layer mm -hmm. um, onto their existing catalogs and institutional repositories um, i then proceeded to spend approximately seven years in corporate librarianship mm -hmm. with focuses on reference research and cataloging Um, 
as I said, I got my current job in October of 2019. Um, and at the time, my predecessor had already left for a new job. Mm. Um, so when I initially came in, I did meet with my predecessor on three separate occasions. Um, we actually came in on three Saturdays. We did get paid for them. Um, and we were able to go over all of the, the basics of the job. Um, but we only met three times. And I figured out very early within the job as I was trying to figure out, okay, what is my day to day that there was just some stuff that we were unable to cover. And while I did have my predecessor's contact information to reach out if I had any questions, um, a lot of it, I was also trying to have to figure out, okay, how do I do this? Um, Polaris originally was part of Innovative. They have been bought and merged a couple of times since then. Um, but they do still maintain, um, the Innovative User Group or IUG for short. Mm -hmm. Um, and in those early days, I didn't know that IUG existed. Um, no one told me it was not something that I was familiar with. Um, and a lot of those early days, I was poring over the existing knowledge base on the Polaris support website and sent near daily emails to my site manager. Um, I joked that my site manager would um, cringe every time that he got an email from me. I sent so many in that early time. Um, and what I was finding is that a lot of times I would receive an email back, whether from my site manager or from one of the tech support staff, assuming I already knew the answer. Mm -hmm. And I would email back was like, if I knew the answer, I would not be emailing for help. Um, a lot of my process became that I was would purposely break something and then retrace my steps to fix it again. Um, and that's how I learned a lot about the back end of our ILS is basically just figuring out how stuff work by making it not work and then being like, okay, what did I do? and retrace those steps to make it work again. And as I said, this actually became my norm. Um, I had been in the position for about six months when that um, shutdown was announced. Um, as you may remember, it was actually announced after, I think around, at least in Pennsylvania, it was announced around 5.30 p.m. on a Friday. Mm -hmm. And all of our libraries closed by 5 p.m. on Friday. So there was a lot of scrambling on the Saturday and the Monday of employees having to go in and grabbing laptops, setting up signage, um, making sure that the HVAC system was turned off, you know, all, all the things with the idea that we were not going to be in the off the libraries for what we initially thought was mm -hmm. two weeks. And then of course extended eventually to um, three months. And um, what I found is that Polaris didn't even know how to do certain things in those early weeks. Um, I would send emails to be like, okay, how do I turn off holds for my libraries? Like we still have patrons trying to request holds because they're like, oh, well, I'll just pick them up after the library reopens. And I got an email back from Polaris being like, yeah, we have no idea. Um, we're not sure how to account for this either. Their own system. Right. Um, like the system was not designed for some of the things that 
there was never Libraries something were trying to figure out that anyone would want to do right i mean yeah why would anyone want to do that so it's not a feature yeah right um i ended up having to go in and delete 400 lines of data within our catalog oh brave <laughs> and then when we eventually reopened and we reinstated holds which i think was early 2021 mm -hmm. i had to go back in and re-enter 400 lines mm -hmm. of data that was fun <laughs> um so you know as i said we initially thought it would be two weeks two weeks turned into a month a month turned into three months um, and I did eventually find a rhythm. Um, of course, like a lot of places, we moved over to virtual meetings. Um, mm -hmm. We were using a combination of Zoom and um, Blue Jeans, which I believe just sunsetted. Mm -hmm. um, I got into the habit of having weekly kvetch sessions with my boss, um, either via online meeting or on the phone. Um, as I mentioned, I'm a parent, and at the time the shutdown happened, my child had just turned two years old. Oh. Um, and we would have daily nap fights, and of course the fight always happened right when I had a meeting. Um, that was also when we introduced Daniel Tiger as a way to have him sit quietly while mommy had a meeting um so it was a constant refrain of won't you be my neighbor <laughs> um it's actually a really cute show and daniel tiger tiger because of mr rogers yes um they have a lot of like little pittsburgh references in it oh yeah 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 so for example there's a couple episodes where there's a wedding and they have a cookie table which is a like Western Pennsylvania tradition. So there were definitely worse shows we could have watched. <laughs> um, so how did I learn a lot of the sort of tech skills that I needed to do? Um, at the time, the Wagon District offered um, free Gale courses with a valid Wagon library card. Um, so I actually, I took a number of courses. Um, I taught myself stuff about cloud computing, networking, information security, um, to give me an idea because I was the default tech person for a lot of the smaller libraries. So I needed to know about how um, basic networking worked and how to fix a printer and various things. So I did take a lot of those um, free Gale courses. I also taught myself extremely basic Python and JavaScript using YouTube videos. Yeah. Um, I also taught myself some basic SQL skills. Polaris does use a form of SQL. I believe specifically they use T SQL. Um, and they have their own server set up. Um, so I was able to use that to practice. I also crowdsourced information through Facebook groups and Twitter when it was still Twitter. Um, so as I said, these were some of the Gale courses that I took, um, understanding the cloud, which was a cloud computing, um, wireless networking, including um, specifically a wireless networking class. Um, introduction, introduction and advanced PC security, as well as an introduction to SQL. And actually the Nebraska Library Commission was a huge help in those early days. Um, if I remember correctly, I actually found it through crowdsourcing one of my Facebook groups. Oh, nice. Um, asking for um, free webinars that I could watch to learn some skills. And they pointed me to the pretty sweet tech ah, that yep. Nebraska Library Commission does on the last Wednesday of most months. Every month, pretty much, yeah. Yeah, yeah I think I saw the December 
they were yeah, taking a break. Sure. Well, but... it's just the way the calendar. Yeah, yeah. Amanda yeah. Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, um, and she does our um, tech-related shows. We also have another staff person who's done some other shows other times of the month too. Um, Andrew Sherman, uh, mm -hmm. Sherm, who is another IT person here, um, who has done some other. Um, if you're if you're into tech, definitely look for his shows. Yeah, December is coming up weird for us here at Encompass Live because. Christmas is on a Wednesday, and then New Year's Day is on a Wednesday, and as yeah. a state agency, we're closed those days. So I actually just had a discussion with Amanda and said, what do you want to do? And she said, oh, let's just skip it for one month. We've never skipped it, so we're going to have a couple of Wednesdays off. Okay. Well. <laughs> it just happens to be the last Wednesday of the month is Christmas, so um, she's getting one month off finally. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but um, so they said someone pointed me to Nebraska Library Commission and specifically the Pretty Sweet Tech. Yeah. And um, I originally actually went back through the archives. Um, the link right mm -hmm. here is actually that um, archive list that you can see oh, yeah. that um, was shown earlier. Uh, it goes back about 10 years. I um, found it goes back to 2009, actually. Our, okay, our so 15 so years. Yeah. Um, I've got entire show history up there all on our YouTube channel. Yeah, so definitely was like trying to figure out, okay, what is still relevant? Again, in like initially it was like 2020, 2021. Um, and then after I went through, I think like the last, like probably about two years of the pretty sweet tech, mm -hmm. um, I went back and watched a lot of some of the other shows on um, just various cool things that libraries were doing during the pandemic and different things. And it was, mm -hmm. it was really a, a huge help. So my, obviously if you're here, you probably already know about the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, but yeah, that was definitely, um, a big help in those, those early months. As I was this is one of the things that was a, we were able to just not have to change up and with when the, when everything shut down i mean mm -hmm. yeah we shut down here as well i started working from home we were even the stage we were closed as well but i could still keep doing the show there was the thinking of so okay so what do we do i'm like i doesn't change anything i do i sit in a computer i have a computer at home i can do it from there so yep. we kept cruising along we kept doing our shows that we had scheduled and then as you mentioned, the other ones started, we started doing shows on topics about the closures and the COVID and what libraries are doing and everything um, yep. at that time, as well as mixed in just regular old shows that we had scheduled already. So we just kept going with it. Yeah, we didn't even take a take a break um, at yeah. all, I don't think. Yeah, no, it was it was great. Um, the uh, Another one that I found to be big help, this is um, TechSoup. Um, you know, if, if you're a public library, you know, you've probably gotten a lot of emails from them about how, you know, they're offering, you know, discounted Microsoft products or different things. But they also have a, um, you know, great archive on um, regards to different trainings and educations. Um, you know, a lot of the stuff here, you know, some of it is about grant writing. Some of it is about, you um, elevating your nonprofit presence um but then they do also have a lot of stuff about um and they said like sequel and stuff about building your web page and um some more stuff on pc security um so this was something we we had the membership this was something that really also was um a huge help to me in those early weeks um these are a couple of other things i wanted to use um i actually found um mosh hademi on um he's on youtube um and he has a whole bunch of beginner python courses um you have stuff that's like as little as five minutes just getting set up all the way to his full course for beginner which is just over six hours wow. and um you know a lot of times i would just go in um you know i'd kind of pick a lesson and kind of see where it um kind of took me um i did have to download um a 
um, you know, thing in order to write my Python. He did um, give uh, some recommendations on what program um, kind of um, thing to use in order to be able to do it. Um, he gives you instructions about how to download it. Um, but I find he was really helpful. He really broke everything down and really um, it's geared towards people who have no previous experience with Python. And then, of course, Code Academy oh, yeah, of course. Um, was one of the other ones I used. Um, I actually don't remember what password I have set up for this. Let me see. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, Code Academy was also another one. Um, I took additional courses on SQL and um, that's where I did some of the stuff with um, Java and JavaScript and um, just different things. Um, I did a little bit, some refreshes with um, HTML and CSS. Um, like many um, sort of rising um, elder millennials, everything I learned about HTML, I learned from the days of LiveJournal. Oh, wow, yeah. Um, so, you know, just took a little bit of refreshers to like, that I knew what new things were out there in regards to HTML and CSS. Um, and it has changed a bit since the late 90s, early 2000s. And then the last thing I did was um, actually a series of courses um, through Polaris. Um, these were actually the only things that cost money. Um, this was something that my boss um, at the time felt was very important um, was that I actually had um, this training through Polaris. Um, they have various um, Polaris certification programs. And um, the one that I specifically did was this one, which is the Polaris System Coordinator um, slash Administrator Certificate. While my official in my title is ILS support librarian, um, my position was most closely aligned with a Polaris system coordinator um, in regards to how my position um, fits into um, the day to day. Um, so these are the required qualifications, um, which is the basics. There was a pack customization. Um, and then Polaris uses a program called Simply Reports um, to run most of their reports. Um, so there was a class specific to um, their Simply Reports. Um, and then I actually did not take any of the SQL courses just because those were additional money. Um, um, this course was already running, I believe, about uh, seven, eight hundred dollars. Wow. Um, and because I was able to do the SQL um, through free means, it was decided that we would focus on these required qualifications and I would do um, SQL through those other means. Um, but as I said, this was something that my boss felt was very important that I have. Um, so this is additional certification in addition to my um, MLIS that I do have in regards to my job. I think that's something to mention too, that having that support for something you're doing your job, your pro the, the professional development you need to do, or just the education you need to keep up with what you're doing yes. in part of your career is very important. Um, yeah. I definitely talk to them about, you know, we, do we have money you know, there should be something in your library's budget. A, there should be a line in your library's budget for professional development for your staff. Yeah. For training, for attending specific training like this, or just for attending conferences, just for the the networking and going to like computers and libraries. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. And it was also around the time that I started taking this course um, that my boss and I had a discussion, and I actually moved from part time to full time. Um, in part because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one reason I initially started part time was, um, you know, you know, with the idea that our kid was in daycare, 
um, it would allow a little bit more flexibility in regards to pick up, in regards to drop off, in regards to expenses. Um, but during the pandemic, when everything was remote, um, I did actually move into full time and I am still full time for almost five years later. So, yeah. Um, and I did eventually find um, actual online support. Um, so I mentioned initially not knowing about the innovative user group and um, I did find them. Um, they have a Discord, which is have been great um, because if I have a question and I can't find the answer on the Polaris knowledge base, um, I can just post it in the Discord and there's any number of people um, that are also Polaris um, system, system administrators that have probably seen the same exact thing that I am seeing and be like, oh, hey, this is what we tried. Um, maybe this will work for you. Um, they also have a annual conference, um, like many things during the pandemic, that annual conference was online. Um, so I was able to attend for a few years, which was a great help. Um, now the stuff has moved back in person. Um, my two annual conference tend to be computers in libraries and then um, my state library association conference, um, which is normally in October. Um, so I have actually not attended IUG in person since they've gone back to in-person conferences. Um, but I am still very active on the Discord. I'm very active in the forums. Um, and that has provided a little bit more in-person support. I have in-person in quotations because it's not like we're meeting face to face, but with Discord, you do have that um, you know, immediate response um within the channels to um questions um this is not to say that everything was perfect um i think it was during the second or third week um after the um everything sort of shut down um i had an absolute massive panic attack about realizing just what I had to learn, how was I going to do it, what was happening. And I mean, I called my boss in literal tears just to be like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I don't know how I'm going to do this. Um, you know, I'm, I have no idea what I'm doing. I, I have my, I have a kid at home. I'm like, what, what is happening? And um my boss reminded me that you know these were unprecedented times no one knew what they were doing um you know to take a deep breath get a cup of tea and and realize that we're all feeling stress and isolated and anxious right now and that just take it day by day hour by hour that we would we would we would get through this um and i mean i really did need to learn flexibility um i i learned a lot about how i learn um in regards to learning new skills and what worked for me um i needed to learn how to work from home on a daily basis um, I need to learn how to work from home with a toddler on a daily basis. Um, I, you know, they said I, I learned about how I work in regards to visual learning versus audio learning versus just doing it and letting myself make mistakes. And as the famous song from Frozen, I needed to learn to just let it go some days. You know, I could not do everything i could not fix everything mm -hmm. and you know as i said there were a lot of duties unassigned during that time um i was the default it person for um many of the smaller libraries in my district i still am and you know it was a lot of figuring out how to do that 
remotely. Um, a lot of my staff have are very basic in regards to their tech skills. Like I would send them a link to open up a, a screen share and they didn't even know what a screen share was. Uh -huh. Um, so it was a lot of learning how to fix things remotely when you were the primary person doing it and you're in one location and they're in a complete different location, um, whether that was their house and they were having an issue with their laptop or once the library started back opening, it was an issue at the library. Um, but I did improve my tech skills. Um, I found that remote working um, did result in better productivity, um, but also a lot more caffeine drinking. Um, I have a, you know, my full tea collection at my disposal almost <laughs> every single day. Um, it also required greater flexibility, adaptability, and multitasking. Um, I learned a lot about multitasking during that time. Okay, so how many people had two to four cups of tea in the chat? Um, let's see, what did everybody think? How many cups of tea did she drink during? I see four to five. I wrote it down, I wrote four to five down for myself. <laughs> I did average two to four cups of tea. Okay. Not bad then. Okay. Um, I also over, found over. very early on that drinking caffeine after 3 p.m. is a bad idea if I wanted to sleep that night. Mm -hmm. um, so that is something I still don't always stick to because sometimes you need that caffeine at 5 p.m. Keep you going to the rest of the day. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Um, also, just for kind of fun, um, as I mentioned, I was learning stuff like basic SQL. Um, my kid, again, two years old when everything first shut down, mm -hmm. decided that he wanted to learn basic SQL with me. Oh, that's and, nice. um, still to this day, he will draw computers um, to pretend that he is working as well. Um, he's actually six now. Um, he will be starting first grade in just a couple of weeks. So oh, long wow. way away from the two-year-old when things first shut down. Um, but as I said, I, I learned how to be a tech person um, rather than a librarian in a tech person role. Mm -hmm. um, so this is my contact information. Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, that is my email. Um, and then I am also on Discord and um, Blue Sky. My username on there is aspdistra with a um, Z. Mm -hmm. um, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm happy to yeah. um, help in any way that I can. Yeah, and um, we'll leave that up there on the screen for now. Um, and I'll also let you know, um, um, Somebody asked earlier, I didn't get to it. Uh, the slides will be available to you as well afterwards with the archive um, as usual. Um, Stephanie will send me um, a link for those and we'll, um, so when the recording goes up, you all have access to the slides and all of the great resources and everything that um, she listed on there. Yeah. Um, does anybody have any questions? Um, nothing came in while you were talking, which is fine. Um, Great. Uh, if you have any questions, anything you want to know more about, anything that Stephanie did, or anything that you all use that you want to share, when um, if you were have been in a similar situation, having to learn something, you know, on the fly, uh, when you weren't sure, and you were thrown into, uh, you mentioned using. Um, go ahead and type into the question section. Um, we've still got about uh, 15 minutes left in the show time here, so plenty of time to have a discussion and answer questions. Um, Steph, you mentioned at the beginning that you used YouTube videos to learn. Mm -hmm. um, and that's been, I know a lot of people have used them for so many things. I, I, I go, I use my, what they call my librarian foo sometimes to go out and just find out, okay, how do I do this thing? What does this mean? And they come up so often for learning things like just, you're talking about really tech things, but how do I do this um, formula in Excel? 
I need to figure out, you know, how do I make this column delete the duplicates from this other column or something? And I've had to use them so many times. <laughs> um, I also used a YouTube video just for something, well, not techie, to fix my washing machine um, one time years ago. It was not, it was something was going, it wasn't draining, doing something properly. And I found a YouTube video for exactly what it was. And I did literally use a rubber band to fix something inside the, the canister without having to um, call a repair person. And that washer still went for another like six or eight years until we moved out of that house. <laughs> yeah. It's just amazing the things you can, you know, find there that people have put out there for you, which is just yeah, so welcome, so awesome that people yes. put these things out there saying, I figured this out here, I can tell you how to do it. <laughs> yeah. All right, so I don't see anybody having any questions right now. I'm going to uh, bring up my screen here then. Um, if anybody does have any questions, go ahead and type them in. Oh, I see someone just said, I just get, get, get a message from someone said that they missed uh, part of, most of, they were called into a meeting and missed part of the session. That's okay. Yeah, you know, we said meetings coming up and happening. No problem. We'll have a recording up as usual. Um, so this is the session page for today's show, as you all know. Um, and go back to our main Encompass Live page. And in the slides for today's presentation, it links you right to the archive page, um, but you can also get to it from our main show page here. Where we have our upcoming shows. There's a link right here to our archive Encompass Live shows. Um, and as we already mentioned earlier, this is our full show archives going back to January, 2009, when the show first premiered. Um, and you can do a search on here if you want to find out if we did do a show on a particular topic, you can look up as was recommended, Pretty Sweet Tech. And that will bring up um, those shows, um, along with other things that is it's like a general uh, search year, uh, but anything tech related, Pretty Sweet Tech, going back quite a few years. But um, as you know, as Stephanie mentioned too, um, be aware when you are watching some of these older shows um, of the original broadcast date for them. They all have the original date on here, so you'll know exactly when it was originally done. Um, some of the shows will be fine to watch. There's things that will be, you know, stand the test of time. They'll still be good, useful things, but some things will become old and outdated. Um, possibly tech things that we talked about 10 years ago are not the same anymore. Um, COVID changed a lot of the way libraries do mm -hmm. things. So older shows might not, well, obviously pre-March pre 2020, they will not mention anything about that. Um, so, um, but just do, you know, pay attention to um, that date whenever you are watching anything. Um, but as, since, you know, this is something libraries do. We keep things for historical purposes. And as long as we have somewhere to host all of our shows, which right now is our YouTube channel, um, we will have them all up there um, for you to watch. Um, most recent shows at the top here. So today's show, the recording will be available here, should be up and ready for you by the end of the day tomorrow at the very latest, as long as YouTube and GoToWebinar cooperate with me. Um, everyone who attended today's show live and re uh, registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when it's ready here. And we will have, as was last week, there'll be a link to the recording on YouTube and a link to the presentation slides. Yeah, and I will email you my presentation slides. I don't think they did that yet. Not yet. Nope. Yeah, but that's okay. We don't need it until I'm working on getting the recording up. No. Um, <laughs> And we also will announce that on, we have a Facebook page for Encompass Live. If you see, we have uh, links here. I've got to open over here where we post. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, meeting our presenters. And then when the recordings are available, we do um, post on here. And this was just last week's was our pretty sweet tech. Uh, Screaming Frog SEO. I love the name of that company. <laughs> um, that Amanda was talking about last week. So we'll push out onto our Encompass Live page. And the Nebraska Library Commission has a Twitter account and an Instagram account. Um, we do out there as well. We use a little hashtag abbreviation Encomp Live, abbreviation of our live of our show name. Uh, so you can also search for that for anything related to the show that we have out there on various <coughs> uh, 
Does anybody have any questions? Anything you want to ask? Anything you want to share before we officially wrap things up? I think I grabbed everything, all the tea guesses and everything. Just some uh, thank you so much. Uh, a lot of great resources. Yes, there is. <laughs> um, I definitely, yeah, this is this was great. Some of these resources I've used before, uh, Code Academy, um, TechSoup, uh, and some things that I didn't know that were out there, which are great. And I'm, I'm thinking a lot of people will uh, be able to use these resources to you know, tech-related training, but also get an idea of just other anything you do in your in your job in your in your library. Um, you can find mm -hmm. the training out there for it, like our archives here. This is all types of things you'll find in here, you know, library strategy, team services, children's services, um, program planning, programming, um, STEAM, STEM, all sorts of things <laughs> are, um, you can find uh, on resources online. Mm -hmm. All right. All right, then I think we'll wrap it up. Nobody has any desperate last minute questions. Thank you so much, um, everyone, for being here. Thank you so much, Stephanie. I'm so glad to get you on the show and be able to share what you've done. And I'm glad we've been able to help you um, from Encompass Live and we'll keep watching. Yes. Yes, I, I'm i thrilled that I finally got to be a guest. It's actually... Yeah, now you're one of them. Yeah, that people... I, I actually, since watching the show, I was like, oh, maybe one day I'll get to be on it. And then here we are. <laughs> So thank you and so I, much. Yeah, I'm so I'm so glad. And I didn't even realize that 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 when I reached out to you that we would were part of it. I wasn't at in computers and libraries this year, so I didn't get to see any of those sessions. But yeah. and I'll have to mention to Amanda that she was mentioned too. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So that wraps up for today's show. Next week's show is operating a culture of belonging. I've got stuff on top of it. Personal librarian 2.0, Audrey Weber, who is from. Um, Princeton University Library will be talking about their personal librarian program that they have at Princeton University Libraries. Um, something I think all types of libraries could use. So please do sign up for that show and any of their other future ones. Um, some dates are not filled in here. You'll see I'm still, I am working with people on uh, getting things finalized um, and getting things, uh, getting some descriptions from people. I do have things scheduled into September, but I just don't, I'm waiting to hear, you know, what's your title and description of your session? I know we've got you confirmed on a date. <laughs> Um, and our Pretty Sweet Tech will be all those last Wednesdays of every month, um, except for December. We are skipping December because it happens to be Christmas, so a Christmas holiday. All right, so I think they'll wrap it up today. Thank you so much, Stephanie. Good to see you, um, and um, maybe we'll see you on a future episode of, of Encompass Live um, on some other topic at some point. So right. thank you, everybody, and we'll see you uh, later. Bye. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.